Welcome back everyone to my Let's Play of Jade Empire. Let's get back in there. Thank you, Wattle Save. Another good deed done for the day. What is going on here? Where are my slaves? The golems require spirit shards. I know. And where are my attendants? Delays and laziness will be repaid in blood. No one disobeys the orders of Shen. <laughs> I regret that there will be no slayers living today, Shen. You? You are Gang's new acolyte. I see what is happening here. You think to promote your master by threatening me. You are bold, but foolish. You thought to make me vulnerable by killing my attendants and emptying the hall? A miscalculation. I am a favorite of Grand Inquisitor Gia. You will die. Longsword! Oh ho. More to the party, huh? Terrible tragedy has reached my ears. Our respected Master Shin has met his end in a rather embarrassing fashion. Funny that. I came quickly after hearing of his stumble. Perhaps it was the cold of the sanctum that made him careless and dulled his senses. Maybe it was. Open the press. How unfortunate. I will make certain he's dead, but not from too close. I don't want to share his tragically foolish fate. Yes, quite dead. How unfortunate. We should honor our fallen comrade, but I am distracted by thoughts of who will take his place. I think the choice is obvious. Me? <laughs> yeah, right. Very good, Acolyte. Very good indeed. You have secured a promising future for your master, despite some minor disruptions. With Shin out of the way, I am free to present you and the Jade Golem Spirit Shard to my masters. I will be lauded, and you will share in my good fortune. Come to me when you are ready for the ritual. I will be outside the door to the inner chambers, waiting for their acknowledgement that the Jade Golem is ready. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You are nearing your goal. Grand Inquisitor Gia keeps many secrets in the inner chambers. Enough to appease the princess and earn your way to the palace. But you may learn more than she wants to know. I know that I did. Many years ago. If you have something to say to, now is the time. You know that Master Li tried to stop his brother and failed. Yes. I was not there to witness that. So I only have the details that you are aware of yourself. Hui in Tian's Landing told you that in response to that act, Master Li's wife was condemned to death. She was with child at the time. This I know for certain. I was there. I was one of the elite ordered to kill Master Li's family. I would not want to own the guilt for such an act. I pity you. 
This is a, a remarkable admission. Do go on, sir. Death's hand brought the order to kill the family. We were cowards if we could not see the wisdom of his order. It was the will of the Emperor. I could not question the orders. They could not be wrong. So you did it? You murdered my master's family? Dirge was burning. Your master had fled, and we stood over a woman who had just given birth. I hesitated, and she was killed. For years I wondered what kind of creature could issue such an order, and what I was for following it. It was easier to be a coward than to question the Empire. Now I understand, and I hope I have shown you as well. They broke a sacred trust. I have returned because of that, even though I know what Death's Hand is. My fate is sealed, but one secret must live on. I killed them all, my fellow assassins. I would not let them finish their mission. Master Lee's child still lives. What? What? Doesn't tell me enough though, does he? Good. Oh dear. Don't want to impose on you there. Ah, I know you. You are the new Acolyte, and you have already brought change. I am the Keeper of the Archive, and I was about to write a new entry. Here ended the rule of Shin, a petty man who fell to the wiles of those he subjugated. He will be replaced by Master Gong, and... Would you care, Acolyte, to contribute your name to this record? Your alleged involvement is worthy of accolade, I'm sure. <clears throat> Allow your chase. And, uh, make sure to spell right. Of course, of course. I know how to appease those destined for greatness within the Order. Have you any questions for the Archive? How long have you kept your Archive? Our Order has existed for twenty years. I have chronicled our new role and rise to glory. Much is mundane, minor shifts in power, the results of various campaigns. True secrets are held only in the minds of Grand Inquisitor Gia and Death's Hand. I want to ask about what is in the Archive. I will answer within the limits of what someone of your ranking is permitted to know. Recent or old entries, you must give specifics. Well, tell me about the Lotus Assassin leadership. All you are allowed to know of your masters is that Death's Hand is the will of the Emperor, and Grand Inquisitor Gia rules this place for him. Obey their wishes when they are made apparent to you, or you will be destroyed. That is all an acolyte needs to understand. Well, fair enough. You may, however, ask about your master Gong. He is not important enough to warrant secrecy. All right, let's hear about him. A thoroughly average assassin relegated to indoctrinating acolytes due to his failure to demonstrate leadership qualities. He is not well liked. His mediocrity is magnified by the successes of Master Shin, an assassin who arrived at the same time and has catapulted through the ranks. Shin is also now dead. Perhaps that will see a rise in Master Gong's fortunes. I wait to record the results. Let's go back. I will answer. Tell me about the time the Order was formed. You are permitted to know that Death's Hand returned from Dirge as the Emperor's trusted confidant after all others around him proved to be traitors. After defeating the Drought, the Emperor was no longer a slave to the natural order of things. He needed utterly loyal disciples to replace and kill doubters. The Order of the Lotus was quickly transformed from its weak role under Prince Kin. Death's Hand was the new way, and those who disagreed were destroyed. What? No one questions such a brutal change? All who did were killed, except one who first hid his doubt. On a mission to cleanse a traitor's family, he rejected Death's Hand and turned on his fellows. Uh... The bodies were unrecognizable. 
More have died to him over the years, but few remain who know his face. He was our most skilled, most vicious, and most hated. So, this rogue assassin escaped punishment? He escaped death, but there is no greater penalty for a Lotus assassin than to be removed from the sight of Death's hand and our Emperor. No doubt many of his years have been worse than death. Once you are truly indoctrinated, you will know the hunger to serve that such loyalty brings. What was this rogue assassin called? His name is not spoken to the Acolytes. You must understand that to oppose Death's hand is to lose all connection to your masters. Even if you live, you do not exist. There are few fates worse than being reduced to nothing. Lotus assassins can belong nowhere else. Service to Death's hand is your life. What was so different in the way you were trained? Master Gong has been lax in indoctrinating you. No doubt he wants to make use of your fiery disposition before stripping you of it. You will come to understand. Soon you will have nothing else but your life here. Your role as a Lotus Assassin leaves no room for anything other than loyalty to Death's Hand and the Emperor. <sighs> Goodbye. Goodbye, Acolyte. Serve our masters well. Oh, I will. Stand. The Grand Inquisitor's will. In your obedience, Death's hand, do not neglect to heed the complex demands of our Mistress Gia, second in glory only to the hand of Death himself. Our Mistress demands that all of her servants think clearly and completely in all that they do. She expects that all Lotus Assassins exercise their minds as thoroughly as they suppress their, the impulses of their hearts. As Grand Inquisitor, Mistress Gia knows all things that happen in the fortress and without. Not even the deepest secrets of the most remote places in the Empire escape her knowledge. Mistress Gia demands that we be cunning, ruthless, and complete in all in blah in our loyalty to her master and ours, Death's Hand. To disrespect her is to disrespect the Empire, the Emperor and Death's Hand himself. She could be a Jedi. I'll do that. The undeniable fire of all threats the young Jade Empire faced, the greatest was the barbarian warlord Zeng Sai. Titled the Three That Defies the Fire, Zeng Sai managed to organize the barbaric horse lords into an efficient and deadly machine of warfare, conquering much of the lands of the west and north of the empire before coming to bear on the borders of the Jade Empire itself. Zeng Sai, who is united in the great wall built to keep his people out, led his hungry, demanded people to attack our fledgling empire in a rabid attempt to destroy all that would become our advanced and prosperous civilization. So vicious and deadly was Zeng Sai's attack that it roused the insular spirit monks from the temple of the land of howling spirits to come to the Empire's aid. Left unconquered by the devouring horse lord army, the monks who dirged stood alongside the Empire in a great battle recounted by sages, playwrights and scholars around the known world, led away to Zeng Sai and his ravenous um, army even, of wild bowmen. With the help of the monks from dirge, the Empire finally burned down the tree that defies fire, and our glorious land has never seen faced so has never since faced so deadly a foe. The way of the Lotus. Many Lacolettes misinterpret the tenets of the Lotus Assassin's order. Stated simply, there are no tenets, save one, obedience. Some believe we preach strength over all, but one must be strong to even be considered for recruitment. We are assassins, not monks. Our order does not teach as much as act. Leave the teachings of the scholars in their wasteful garden. Our mandate is to serve the will of the Emperor through Death's hand and Inquisigia. Because it demands strength, we give them strength. Because they demand cunning, we give them cunning. Most of all, they demand obedience, and so we give them obedience. To do otherwise would be to spit in the eyes of those who would hold our spirits in their hands. Acolytes may create philosophical justifications to the lives they have chosen. But in the end, our master's wills are the only truth and the only law we serve. Alrighty. We'll leave it there for now. When I return, we shall go see Master Gowan. Stay with me.